I'll just say welcome. Welcome to this CTNC webinar, Community Tree Nurseries and Schools Growing Together. Uh, if you could keep yourself on mute um, whilst we're, you know, whilst we're talking, that would be great. So I'm Hilary and I'm the coordinator for the CTNC. And for those of you who are new, haven't been to one of our webinars before, the collaborative is a peer-to-peer -peer learning network supporting community tree nurseries in the UK and building community between the community tree nurseries as well. This webinar is a bit different. It's a collaboration between the Tree Council and the CTNC. Um, we have two guest speakers, Sandra Tuck and Matt Knight, after which there'll be an open discussion for those who wish to share any experiences of working with schools. And then Will and Annie from the Tree Council will be sharing information about their new project linked to CTNs. And we'll take questions right at the very end. So there will be this open discussion in the middle, which is slightly different from our normal format, but we will clarify that as we go along. So now to introduce our first speaker, Sandra Tuck, who has spoken for us before actually on seed collecting. Uh, she is the development manager at More Trees, Bath and North East Somerset. And Sandra is going to give an outline of how they work with schools currently to deliver tree growing throughout their district. Thank you, Sandra, for coming along again to speak. It's okay. Um, just checking you can hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank I'll you. just share my screen. I'm I'm um, from More Trees, Bain. So Bain stands for Bath and North East Somerset. Um, so that's the area that we work in. Um, I've just put a few slides together which will help to remind me what I need to talk about. So I'm just going to hopefully share that now. Can you see that okay? Yeah, okay. Um, well, thanks for inviting me. Um, always really glad to be able to come on and um, listen, share and learn from other people. And it's it's really nice to be able to share what we've been doing with schools. It's quite nice to share what you do as well, isn't it? So, um, so thanks for inviting me to talk. Um, so this is just the way that we've done it in the particular way that we've done it here, obviously, and other people I'm sure will be doing it in lots of different ways. But so we're just sharing our model, if you like, and how we've gone about it um, in, in Bath and North East Somerset. Um, we're very much been learning as we go um, and then adjusting what we do as, as we go along, really. Um, so I've shared our kind of vision um, for the charity. It's quite a new charity, although we've been planting trees for a long time. Um, but I felt it was important to kind of talk a bit about the kind of fundamentals of your organisation or community group um, because that will help to guide um, you know why, why you're doing a school tree nursery or you know what what the purpose is and what you want to get out of it so sort of understanding those sort of fundamentals is quite is always quite important I think for us um, our vision is you know probably quite familiar we want lots of trees everywhere um, but you know the mission is important too you know bringing every bringing people together really and you know and perhaps a little bit more unusual is actually sort of growing the trees as well as planting and caring for them um, and I think the, the words inspire and enable, enable each other are quite important to us because um, a lot of people have got have got things to share, have got sort of experience, uh, ideas and so on to share. And we're very much about that at More Trees, Baines. So, um, yes, this the community tree nurseries in schools is just part of our mission, which is to promote um, opportunities to learn about trees, really, to value them. And we although we have planted trees in the past, that can often be a one off event. So the great beauty of growing the trees is there's a, an opportunity for longer term connection with people um, and for them to understand all the different phases of a tree's life um, has, has proved really a really good tool for engaging with communities and, and with schools. Um, so our model at More Trees from the beginning had been to have a kind of central hub um, I'll explain a bit more about the hub and what that is in a minute. Um, so we started um, 
uh, planting trees, like I said, from 2008. And then in 2020, we, we opened up our first community tree nursery. And then after that, we started um, looking at schools as well. So in 2020, I think we had one or two community nurseries and that we had our first school nursery in 2021. These are the, the, red, uh, the red circles here. Um, and then in 2022, last year, we developed five more nurseries. So in total, we have six community tree nurseries. Um, we found that almost any school that you ask would want to have a tree nursery. Um, so after a while, we stopped asking. Um, we haven't really got the resources to expand the number of schools any further. And I'll probably I'll come on in, in a bit to talk about the resources that we found you need to engage with schools and set up new tree nurseries. I mean, schools can obviously do it themselves without anybody helping them. So there'll, there'll be plenty of schools that have got the resources and they want to go ahead and do that. Um, so like I said, this is just our method. Um, so our hub, as we call it, is basically we, we collect seeds from all over um, Bath and North East Somerset. Um, some of the schools did some seed collecting as well. Um, we did some seed processing with in the schools as well with the children, which was quite interesting. <laughs> Um, but we've also got this central hub where we we're borrowing a, a space, basically, as you can see, this is a, a greenhouse that we're borrowing off the local council um, and they've given us um, kind of the permission to be there um, until we find a new home. Um, so we have volunteers that come there and they process all the seed and germinate when the seed starts germinating in January. Um, and, and in other parts of the year, then we they help us to sow them in, in root trainers. So we've used root trainers because, as you can see from the picture there, they're quite versatile. So we can pick them up. Each, each one of these root trainers has 32, potentially 32 trees in it. Um, so we grow them in the greenhouse, first of all, to get them going. And then we bring them out into the kind of the outside space, space which you can see there. And then when we go to the nurseries in schools, we bring these root trainers with us. So even if they're collecting seeds and processing seeds, we bring that back to the hub and we get them going. Um, and we've done that partly because it makes the process for them a lot easier. So we're getting, they're getting success. Their, their trees are coming back to them, you know, having got going and then they're planting them out in the school grounds. Um, so I've just picked out a few of the nurseries to talk about. This is a not untypical school tree nursery. Um, we're using some beds that we've kind of resurrected, if you like, um, in an existing garden area that was completely overgrown. So it was quite a bit of work to get it um, back up and together. Um, we thought we'd one of our these this was one of our first schools um it's quite a well-resourced school um there's quite a mixed intake but it's it's generally sort of quite an up and together school um so they were kind of first off the block really saying they'd like a tree nursery um this is a couple of beds and they can they grew about 150 trees in that last year um and then we went ahead and lifted them and they were planted out in a local area um we want to do some seed collecting and germination with them and, and sowing seeds with them next year. Um, but I think the main focus in this school is to work with the, the, the lead in the school to try and work out ways of um, integrating it, uh, the work in the nursery and all aspects of the tree growing into the curriculum at the school to get the kids out to the nursery and doing the other activities as much as possible. Um, this is St. Michael's School from T in Twerton. This is one of our newest schools. Uh, just absolutely lovely kids, lovely school. You can see our new raised bed there. So we actually had some funding to, to put this bed in. Um, they are, it is a, uh, in a quite a deprived area, this school, but it's quite well resourced as, as well. It has a forest school lead there. Um, so they we asked all we ask all our schools to raise a bit of money towards the beds um, and that's just to help them i think integrate the whole idea into the school so they did their hot chocolate story um and did they raise a little bit of money you know have hot chocolate and have a, a um, it was a read reading evening and you know bring 50p or whatever 
so the school raised about 40 pounds towards the beds which is not very much money but it that's not that wasn't so much the purpose of it it was more to just raise awareness with the parents and the children and the teachers about what was happening um so again we want to do some seed they're really keen to do some seed collecting and planting and we're going to do a little trip around the local green space so that they can do some seed collecting because they're quite small i've got to think quite carefully about about that about taking kids onto sites um in terms of health and safety and being able to reach berries because there's not that many berries close and there's prickly bushes and things like that but anyway um so yeah they think the comfort the the focus there is on confidence and and well-being for the children um they're getting a lot out of it you know they've become really excited about the nursery um so Fosway School again is we've gone we've tried different kinds of schools in different settings so that we can learn really as it we're still kind of in a pilot phase. So Fosway School is for um, children with learning disabilities, a whole range of different di disabilities, and we're working with a 16 to 19 year old centre there. Um, the bed was um, installed by us. Um, again, they they. Um, raise some money through a, a walk um, to help towards the costs which was great um, and as you can see the raised bed is quite a bit higher in this case um, and that's for access, ease of access because of some of the disabilities the physical disabilities that some of the children have um, that is again a really well resourced school and it has a forest school lead um, and we did actually do seed collecting and processing with them, which went really well. And we're using that as a kind of a little pilot to kind of work out how to do it in other schools. Um, that's very much focused on skills development and using using the activity to help um, the pupils with, um, uh, you know, things like, um, you know, using their hands and, and needing dexterity and having to be careful with the plants, putting them in and out. And they're, they're really amazing, actually. The amount of care and attention that they've given to the plants is really, really interesting and really impressive. Um, this is a couple of our other ones. So Oldfield Park Junior School, that was also one of the first ones. That's obviously it attracted a bit of media attention. Um, and Roundhill Primary School, I'll come on to that one later, but that's probably, I would say, the most challenging school that we've worked in so far. Um, St. Mark's Senior School has been a great school to work in, so that's a senior as opposed to a junior primary, which is again a different experience and a different kind of um, focus. So it's more on, uh, you know, the, the children getting a feeling for a different kind of work experience or a different kind of work. Um, some of the children from this school have actually come and done sort of, um, you know, they have weeks where they do work experience and things and we've linked up with the school around that. Um, it's a really big, they've got a big space and we did a lot of beds with them. So they are, they're growing about 400 trees. Um, and that's been quite a challenging school to work in, but we've learned lots of, we've learned a lot about how to organize the sessions and things um, when going into schools. Um, let me know when I've got maybe just a, two or three minutes left, left, Hillary. I've no idea how long this has taken me. <laughs> so, uh, so just, yeah, let me know if I'm running out of time. Um, so I think I, going back to what I said at the beginning, um, for us, you know, the main reason, I mean, if you want to grow a lot of trees, you don't go to lots of different places to, to, to grow trees. So that the aim is really to like engage people and to engage children when they're really quite small and start to draw them in um, to the whole idea of, of, of trees, growing trees, the benefits of trees, um, and also just the joy of growing things really. Because I think even, you know, for all the adults, um, collecting seed and then seeing it grow into a tree that just that in itself is a really inspiring thing and not something that you would normally think of so when we went to St Mark's school and we started looking around the grounds we found you know things like enormous conference pairs lying on the floor um, and it was just a great opening and in a way to say to the children you know look these all these trees around you have got seeds and um, obviously pear, pear is a little bit different but you know just um, taking the seeds that they've collected back to them and saying look this is growing into a tree now has been um, really inspiring so um, that's what it's all about um, so we're focused on on the activity and the engagement 
Um, and I think it's, you know, therefore, you're, what, what are you looking for when you go into the schools? You're not really looking for, you know, loads and loads of trees. You know, you're looking for a really sort of well-managed uh, experience so that people can engage with it. Um, so, you know, resources is really important. Um, I We have found it incredibly resource heavy. <laughs> So it takes a lot of time um, in, lo in lots of different stages. So setting the beds up or setting up the nursery, getting in and out of the school, organising contractors or doing it ourselves, clearing great areas of overgrown vegetation. Um, you know, so setting the nursery up itself is quite time consuming. And obviously you want to, you do enjoy that. And we enjoyed involving the children in all aspects of that. But their involvement is very much, you know, about them getting involved rather than getting stuff done. So we are often there after the sessions with the kids to actually finish off what needs doing. Um, so obviously you need to think about the, the suitability of the site. So um, and develop your own criteria for selection. So you know the obvious things um have you got an area in the school where the football isn't going to trash the trees um is there a kind of you know a garden area that's already being used is that suitable um have you got water that's really critical um and easy access to water otherwise there's always the danger that if it's difficult to water the trees they won't get watered um so um the the physical infrastructure where it is if people can see it, get easy access to it, the pupils can get in and out safely and that kind of thing. Um, and then um, when I've said criteria for selection, like I said, for us, we want to do a, you know, a junior school, a primary school, a, a senior school. We wanted to work with children that had disabilities. We wanted to work with children from the special educational needs um, centre in one of the schools. Um, so we were looking to try and learn really about how to, to work with in different schools um, in some in deprived areas, some in, in more sort of um, affluent areas um, and, and to get a, a whole range. Um, so um, just wrapping up a bit now, um, what we've learned, like I said, you know, for most schools, you've, you've got at least six children, you know, you have to manage the number of children that you're going to have in any at any one time. So um, we've in the end, we've said we have a maximum of eight children um, and we like to have the teacher there because the teacher needs to do the discipline side of it because we don't have the authority. So um, we found that um, having two people at each visit, so we one of us goes in, so I'm a paid member of staff and we've got a volunteer coordinator um, and we also bring um, volunteers with us um, because they um, people are looking for experience of working in schools and um, so we've, we've got volunteers that got experience of working with children who come with us too. Um, everybody's very keen that we will engage them in the entire um, process. Um, so... Um, Somebody's brought my tea. Thank you. That's Sorry. Nice. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> We're eating it just yet. Um, so, so yes, um, the sewing, yeah, they're all really keen to get involved in the other activities. And so we've done it a little bit with schools and we've got a feeling for how to do that now. So over the, over a period of time, we'll, we're, we're developing, um, you know, seed collecting and processing in the autumn term. So we'll do that all, with all the schools this autumn term. And then we go on to tree lifting in the next term. Um, and then finally tree planting. So we've got trees coming. Um, some of them grow fast, some of them grow slow. So um, every year they'll be getting new tree seedlings coming in just to keep the interest going. Um, so yeah you need to think about finances um if you haven't got a bed actually these days if you're paying somebody to install a bed the wood is expensive the labor is expensive and we got funding for some of that from the uh, tree production capital grant um this last year but you may have access to volunteers and free materials it doesn't have to cost a lot of money there might be volunteers associated with a school or your own um, charity or organization um or, as I said, you don't need always need raised beds. You know, we're doing a lot more now without raised beds, you know, putting in um, my pegs with um, mul and mulched paths um, it's a lot cheaper. Um, so then you'll need to think about safeguarding 
and I don't, you know, I don't have no idea who, who, what, what kind of different angles people are coming at it from, but we ob obviously had to be DBS checked. Um, and you learn quite quickly that you need to have that with you every time. If it's an enhanced, something called an enhanced DBS check, it's more expensive. I think it's, I think it's something like 80 pounds or something like that. Um, but it's really worth having that. It makes it so much easier for the school because you don't have to be shadowed all the time. Um, so, and then obviously you, you have to, ha it's good to have safeguarding policy and processes in place because you're obviously working with children. Um, and then uh, just a really practical thing, but we realised that blackthorn is not a great idea to grow because it's obviously pretty spiny. So when it comes to lifting it, it's um, a bit tricky. Um, things like elder as well. I mean, elder is, a, is, a, is really difficult to get out even after one year. So going back to wasps, you probably noticed or you may have noticed that there's lots of elder there and it's, it's so difficult to get it out. So I think, you know, pick your pick the trees that are easy to grow, especially to begin with, just to give them a chance to get some success under their belt. Um, the hornbeam grow really slowly. So people were a bit disappointed with those, but it's just because they grow slowly. Um, and final side really was just challenges and successes. Um, it's, you've probably noticed I haven't got many photos of children. Really difficult to get photos of children. You've got to, you've got it takes time to get photos that you can share for, for safeguarding reasons. Um, we're finding that staff change a lot, especially at the moment in schools, and they don't have much time. So that's challenging finding finding the time with the with the staff in a school to help with the nursery is difficult. Um, I think that's particularly post COVID, I think, as I understand as well as a lot of transition going on in schools. Um, so I think over time, it's about building commitment with the management team in the schools and getting embedded in the school more thoroughly is really important so that when your member of staff goes off sick, which is what happened with Roundhill, you don't completely lose contact with the school. So that that was why Roundhill had been, although we've got a tree nursery there, we've hardly been able to get in this year because the head changed and the member of staff that was helping with this left as well. So um, water, really important. We discovered all sorts of weird things around water. They, people said they had access to water and then the tap would be switched off and they wouldn't be able to water them and all that kind of thing. So again, that's just over time. You know, we, we've made friends with the caretakers. They're the people to get to know. They can help you get in and out of the school and they'll do the watering in the summer, which is really important if they, and you know, mostly it's been the caretakers to be fair that have done the watering during summer months. Um, yeah, it's great for learning and engagement. The kids absolutely love it. It's great for confidence and well-being. Um, it's really motivating for the children to see the trees growing. Um, they're really proud of them. They really love their little tree nurseries. And a bit like all of us, we get really, um, uh, what's the word? You start to care about your trees, don't you, when you start to grow them. So they become your babies. And I think that's really great for the kids to be involved in something over the longer term that's got, you know, that they need to kind of uh, involve, get involved with over a period of time. Um, so hopefully I haven't gone too much over. Um, and um, it's been helpful. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sandra. No, that's perfect. The timing. Very comprehensive. Wonderful. Wonderful points. Um, for those who've just recently joined, um, we've, that was Sandra Tuck there talking. The, the session's being recorded, so you can go back and, and rewatch it. Um, but I'm now going to introduce our next speaker who is Matt Knight, and he is the Head of Sustainability and Ecology at St Mary's Junior School. Shinfield St Mary's, I should say, and co-founder of the charity Freely Fruity. And Matt is going to now share on how his school grows trees from seed and how they do work with the local community. So welcome, Matt. Good evening, everyone. Um, so yeah, as, as we just alluded to there, I currently work as a teacher in a primary school um, and I've should start by saying I've crafted this position of uh, head of ecology and sustainability from thin air. Um, but yeah, it's it's very much a work in progress. So everything that I'm going to be talking about today um, is evolving constantly all the time. Um, we're currently working with Reading University and the Department for Education on trying to actually get some form of um, 
curriculum out there because at the moment as you're pretty aware you have to there are bits and bobs in the curriculum like growing and things like that but it's very very tenuous and few and far between so we'll hopefully watch your space and hopefully um coming in the future that should be something to be looking at <laughs> so okay i'm just going to quickly take you through what we have at the school at the moment um we have 24 raised beds which we grow a variety of different things in from produce um garlic um lettuce everything really and um, fruit bushes the one thing we don't do and i'm, I'm now like oh, i've got some spare beds i think i'm going to start growing some trees in there now that i've seen sandra's uh trick of lifting that might be quite handy so any of the spare beds that's what we'll be using for um we've also got an aquaponic biodome um for those of you who don't know what that is it looks a little bit like the crystal maze dome and inside of it um we have fish in ponds um feed the fish fish poop the poop goes through uh filter systems and all of the ammonia is turned into usable food substances for the plants so which in return we then feed back to the fish so it just keeps going in the cycle and obviously any extra we have goes off to food banks a um, couple of other things we we're doing at the moment so composting is huge in the school apart from obviously things like grass leaves uh, chicken manure because we have uh, quite a few different animals in the school um, all of the fruit waste gets composted as well and that's obviously really useful because you can use that to to grow trees and, and other stuff within it uh, thing on the right hand side there is something called a hugel culture i won't go too much into what that is but it's a, a no dig form of growing uh, which we started a couple of years ago which is going pretty well as well that's really cool uh we've built a bottle greenhouse a bit, a bit of a <laughs> i have quite a few conversations with people um in the plastic world about you should you should recycle it i was like God, i'm still reusing better so i'm i'm more, more this is gonna before this ever turns into microplastics it will, it will be recycled so it is not an issue um we also have a polytunnel where we grow quite ambitious things like avocados bananas um and then less ambitious chilies stuff like that uh we've got up on the top left there is an artificial stream uh, which we've constructed um and that is for our pollinators um for our orchard um and for our local wildlife so that's useful for the children they get cameras set up and they can see what comes to visit in the night uh, top right hand side we've just installed 113 solar uh, panels in an array so that's obviously really good for our um, carbon footprint uh, down the left hand side there's obviously I didn't lock them in there honestly they're, they're, they they can't get out um, so those two lads in the other uh, chicken coop um, and again in in our school all of the animals are tended to by the children themselves so we have various different um, eco groups at lunchtime and after school uh, on the right hand side um that is a vending machine which we turned into a book vending machine so um that that was kind of a bit cutting edge at the time um i think a few more people started to do that now recently but that's very very cool uh obviously wildflower meadows very important again for the pollination of um our trees and uh and fruits and things um and down the left hand side that's uh, a couple of ex pupils on one of the tas uh so as i said all of the food we grow uh, on site we used to um sell it to um the parents and, and and people in the community and then we donated the money to launchpad which is a homeless charity um however um we now just donate the food direct to the food banks um and obviously the children get to see that social side of it which is really important i think for them um and then i guess the moving on to tree planting so we have planted somewhere in the region of five thousand trees in the last or years on our school site um my caretaker really loves me um he has to go around with a strimmer so <laughs> as you can imagine I'm not very popular with a caretaker but um I'm sure he loves it really um and then the most recent thing we've done uh, Amir Wacky Forest so this was in conjunction with uh the tree council um they provide us with the trees and um, the local borough council provide us with the mulch uh and also with the the canes and the supports um and the guards and we've planted 2,000 trees and and you know, I, I'd like to say that that C for Charles Charles Rex yeah yeah it was totally intentional we didn't realize it was a C until we took the photo from above and it was like wow that's a, a C um but actually yeah we spend an inordinate amount of our time on that Miyawaki forest at the moment um the weeding is unbelievable uh, we get I think probably about four tons of weeds out of there already since April, which is they just won't stop growing. Um, but then obviously that's that's good news because obviously the soil is nice and fertile for the for the forest itself. Um, for those of you who don't know what a Miyawaki forest is, um, 
it's effectively a forest that will grow within 20 to 30 years apart, uh, aside from the usual 200 to 300, and it's named after a Japanese botanist, Akira Miyawaki, so hence his name. Um, how we did it, a lot of help, a lot of help. So obviously um, we had um, a couple of the tree council guys pop in um, to have our Richard and Ian, they popped in um, and delivered the trees. Um, and then it was a case of utilizing um, volunteers. We've had hundreds, hundreds of volunteers because it's not an easy thing to build and construct a mere wacky forest on a hill um, that has 2000 trees, as you can imagine. It took a lot of work, but um, yeah, using things like neighborly um, and my own contacts, uh, we probably have one to two groups of volunteers um, a week, ranging from about seven people up to 30 people which gets a little bit more uh, difficult to manage but yeah uh, really important that you get um, the local um, the sort of corporations involved because they're quite happy to come out and leave their desk to come and do something outside and um, so that has led us on to where we are now which is the tree nursery um, so these are some of the trees that we've grown from last year um, I suppose you can go back to the start originally um, we were getting trees from uh, Tree Council, uh, Woodland Trust, my own charity, Freely Fruity, um, and some other various um, sources uh, that were doing sort of uh, charity promotions where they're like, have some trees. We're like, yes, we'll have some trees. Um, but they have obviously, it'd be, we figured it would be more sustainable if we could grow our own. Um, so our first job was obviously identifying what trees we've got on our property. So. Um, we did that first of all, we went around with all the children, um, did some surveys, tried to identify the trees using the leaves or the fruits or the flowers, depending um, on what time of year it was. Um, most of it was done in the seed time of year, to be fair, so it was more on the leaves than anything else. Um, and then we went around and we started to collect various different seeds and seed pods and, uh, and nuts and things like that. Um, the children themselves obviously are learning quite a quite a bit from this the whole experience is not just about just picking up a you know a conker um they were obviously learning that this was a horse chestnut this is what we need to do to, to grow this thing um and we collected somewhere i think somewhere like 500 horse chestnut conkers um and most of them have germinated so if anybody wants any horse chestnut trees please just shout um <laughs> um they, they are prolific um that's the one thing we probably <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. The one thing I have learned is horse chestnuts, most of them do germinate. Um, unlike the oaks, most of those do, but yeah. And then uh, and as we went through the different trees, um, varying success, but we'll get to that in a moment. So we had the two methods, very similar to as Sandra was saying about the seed trays with the, uh, the root trainers. Uh, I found those most successful for things like um, um, our sycamores and our field maples and things like that and rowan. Um, but I did try this method last year for, for things like conkers and, and acorns, and it didn't work too well, I found anyway, um, but we'll get to where that happened in a moment. Um, what I did find out instead, that was the nut method, as I call it. So um, one thing that kids love to do is collect leaves. They love it. I don't know why. It's just something that they like to do. So I was like, be free. Here's a broom. Here's a, here's a wheelbarrow. And they came back with tons of the things. So um we borrowed some uh, food trays stacked them full of the leaves and then started layering up things like um hazelnuts which we don't have on site actually they came from wales <laughs> borrowed them from um a tree that where we go to rossaguaria in north wales um and then from things like acorns um sweet chestnut which is my neighbor um he willingly let me go and roam and scavenge about in his garden for that so again we then i, I, I don't know if you work in schools if um house points literally kids will do anything for a house point i find it's the most easy thing in the world they're like if you bring me a seed i'll give you a house point and then i had millions of seeds um so uh, the only thing is obviously they didn't write on what they were which became a little bit <laughs> a little bit more hit and miss and trying to figure out what they might actually be but i found with the nut method um pretty much i'd say some in the region of 80 percent of the horse chestnut um seeds germinated um and with the oak less i guess probably about 60 to 70 and so far none of the others have so i don't i don't i need to evaluate what's gone on there and we'll get to in a minute why a lot of those didn't work um so obviously once we get to the certain stages you can see there on the right hand side we've got that small 
um, horse chestnut coming through there. Uh, when we get to that stage, uh, we also want to get them out of the tray and we wanted to then pop them on. Uh, now, one of the, the, the best things we did was um, get very friendly with our local council. Um, so RE3 are the local waste disposal company for Woking them in the Reading area. And what they do is um, they repurpose everybody's gardens waste and produce this compost, which they really fast produce. And that's, I have to be honest, not the best compost in the universe, but it is, it's very good for trees, it's fine for trees. Um, you get the odd weird oddity that appear in here as well, the odd toothbrush and some other strange things. But um, yeah, so we get all of that for free, which is obviously a, a massive resource um, for saving for us. Um, I think we've had probably 250 bags of uh, 40 litre compost. So pretty impressive uh, stuff. So the children, again, are learning how to, to carefully handle these trees, how to get them into pots, um, and then ready for their next stage in their life when they'll be taken to the field and plotted on. Um, now, we were very fortunate recently, uh, before we were given this, and we're actually really lucky, we were donated all of the uh, sort of Danish stacking uh, trolley stuff. Um, before that, I had trees everywhere and it's not really a good way to, to run this it was a nightmare trying to water anything nightmare trying to check on the on the seed pot whereas now um it's gone it's gone a very ocd now we have all the same trees in the same places and we're able to water them really easily we've got a hose that's now running behind that greenhouse there so the children can easily water all of the different uh, plants tree seeds and and uh, and trays with the uh, the nuts in them as it were so teething problems quite literally um yeah that little blighter up in the top left hand corner there yeah um he ate my entire hazelnut stuff and i'm really miffed with him um i'm sure he had a great time living his life living his life but yeah he ate every single one and there's about 50 of them so hope he's happy with himself and, and he's like how do i know it was him because when i opened the tray he was in it he was like literally in the tray and just looked at me and yeah i think his life flashed before his eyes and he ran away but um uh, <laughs> probably the other the other biggest thing we've lost too is the mold up on the right hand side there it's the biggest problem the thing I think I've learned the most is to not overwater um the seed trays and things like that and that was something that I, I learned the hard way the first year so this is actually although it's technically the first year of the seed nursery the tree nursery last year I tried to do it in an unofficial capacity and made a real hash of it and effectively drowned all of my seeds um because of forgetting that they obviously need oxygen. I'm not quite sure what I was thinking about at the time, but I sat them all in trays of water. Yeah, they won't dry out. They definitely didn't dry out, but um, yeah, uh, fungus gnats moved in and just munched their way through uh, the majority of the seed that was in there. Um, things like crows as well. We've had all kinds of different birds that rock up again, sweet chestnuts and, and stuff, are real, um, and the cherries that we've got are really appetizing to birds. So we've had to put chicken wire across the top of it. And again, slugs, not so much for the seeds, um, but definitely for the seedlings. If they get in, they, they, they love the, um, the tender bark on the, uh, on the bottom of the trees. And of course, that then kills the tree outright, which is, is a bit of a shame. Um, so I suppose that moves us on nicely to uh, community. So um, as I said, the, the biggest thing I think is speaking to people is to make connections with your local corporations, whether that be through um there are you know specific charities out there like neighborly who will quite happily um send you volunteers because uh, things like uh, virgin for example virgin media they have something called take five so every single employee of virgin media has to take five days a year doing volunteering so they're literally looking for volunteering opportunities so the, the you know the help is out there and these guys they actually even even when i got them weeding today they were still like it's better than being in the office i was like that's true that's true i'm doing this every day for all months so i'm not feeling your love so much but yeah for them it is, it's it's quite an exciting day out um and obviously they're getting in touch with nature so it is i think it's valuable to them as it is maybe to us um, again, I've made connections with the, the council, really important. Um, our local council are being very proactive, so they are uh, growing 200, well, their target is to plant 250,000 trees um, by 2030. Um, and so obviously we've done, 
we've already done one percent of that this year just with the mere wacky so um you know we're very popular with them um of course they don't have to pay for contractors to come out and to do that because we have a small child army of 362 children um who are very very happy to to do that as well um they did provide the trees and the tree guard uh, sorry the tree guards and the stakes and the mulch so again um great cost savings actually the Miyawaki forest itself apart from time literally costs us nothing so um uh yeah it's i suppose it's just about meeting and talking to as many different people as you can you know meeting the sanders of the world you know finding these lovely people who are going to be coming in schools um, and willing to help you um to actually set up um you know these, these great learning tools i think for children um where it's not just about producing trees it's the whole the whole process of it as well so they are you know in effect because I, I learned the stat when i was doing the work with reading university um and again stats are stats but this one sounded quite convincing uh, and that is that in 30 years time 70 percent of all jobs will be directly or indirectly linked to sustainability and, and currently we're not teaching sustainability which seems mind-boggling so i think anything we can do to teach children about their environment um teach them how to grow things you know live in a more sustainable way can only be good I think for um for the future of our country. And that, as they say, is that. Thank you, Matt. That was wonderful. It's so lovely to see how many projects you're involved in in your school. Busy, busy. Fantastic. Um, so we're now going to have a, a little discussion. And I believe Katie, Katie Rafferty, who's the National School Programme Officer for the Tree Council, will start us off with that. Yes, thank you. So um, we have the pleasure um, in the Tree Council of having a school programme. Um, um, part of that is the Young Tree Champions, and we're lucky to have um, Matt's school, Chinfield St Mary, is one of our beacon schools. But we also have um, a network of other schools, and some of those schools have shown interest in um, growing trees from seed, but have raised questions. And I just thought this would be a really useful um, forum to discuss the the different questions they've raised in terms of how they might get involved in um community tree with tr community tree nurseries and in growing trees from seed um so some of our schools have got very enthusiastic pupils like matt referred to them as ar armies willing armies um who absolutely love gathering seeds who um scour the ground for them and who gather great numbers whether it's on the school site on the way to and from school um, but don't know what to do with it and don't do a great amount with it. So in terms of reaching out and um, contacting local community tree nurseries, contacting organisations like yours, Sandra, um, I'm assuming that you don't normally have trees just to, uh, schools turn up on your doorstep with bags full of seed. If they did, would that be something suitable? Would you rather they get in touch with you? What would be the process? be if they feel like they could gather seed for your community tree nursery and how could they go about supporting you in doing that and getting involved in that process is that a question to me was it katie or um yes or anybody who is oh, right. on the chat who would like to kind of share their thoughts yeah I'll like let somebody there. else So if anyone would like to uh, come in with any insights in response to that question, um, please feel free to do so. I've got a couple of questions I can see in the chat. Did you want me to answer those now? Or? I think we're, this was designed to be a sort of discussion. We're going to take questions at the end. Is that right, Katie? I think this was designed to be an a kind of like open discussion about um, any community tree nurseries that are here and have worked with schools so far and that are maybe sharing their experiences particularly. Um, and then Will and Annie from the Tree Council are going to talk about the new project that the Tree Council have and there'll be questions sort of at the end of that, but um, we'll see how it goes if anyone wants to discuss anything now then that would be great. Let's, um, Rachel, would you like to? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Um, I used to be a teacher and um, we did some seed collecting by um, asking uh, children either to bring in uh, seeds from home 
or to bring in seeds from if they don't have a garden, if they're in a very urban area, then from on their walk to school. Uh, we used to give them some input beforehand, so maybe show some examples. So, and like the comment in the chat, you know, including um, extended family in that. Um, the other thing that we might have done would um, to do some prep work with our forest school lead. Every chat, every class uh, had a forest school session each week, and so within that session which was usually in the school grounds or local environment, they could collect seeds then. Or you could have a, um, a themed term of growing things. Um, you'd have to tie it in with the season. So you could start in the autumn and then recap in the, um, in the spring. So in the autumn, you could do your um, outdoor session, like a, a day trip and go to a local park, an arboretum in a local park. For example, in Nottingham here, we've got several parks. We've got Woodthorpe Park, in which is quite close to the centre, and that with, they've already got a tree walk. So you can use their staff and you could walk around the whole area and, and collect seeds on your way. And then we've got the arboretum in the city, which has got all sorts of all sorts of different trees. So it's 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 uh, like uh, Matt said, you know, it's using a lot of different resources, different community groups that could probably help with that. So I think a, a lot of it is is engaging the community and using families to do that collection for you, and then then bring it into school. That's fab. Thank you. Um, and one other question that has been raised by our schools, and it Matt touched upon it slightly there as well, um, is once if you have successfully grown trees from seed and have 500 horse chestnuts growing, thriving in your school grounds, um, but don't necessarily have the space to plant them within your school grounds, um, are there, um, would community tree nurseries be able to help in terms of contact of local areas to plant them within or um is there a way that they can find happy and suitable um homes for trees that they've grown that they might not be able to plant on site so does anyone have any experience of that that they might be able to share with our school network so richard's um, raised his hand. Is that in relation to that question, Richard, or did you have something else you'd like to share? Um, two things I was going to mention was um, one, I think it's also worth um, doing cuttings with schools, particularly easy cuttings like um, dogwood, elder, they stroke really easily. And I found the children really enjoy, you know, once you've demonstrated doing the cuttings, um, it's a great activity for the children to do that. And um, variable re results depends on the year and the time of year you do it, um, but sometimes you can get really, really quick results with a cutting um, quicker than you can with a seed. Um, and as we know, patience is something that's needed, so you can speed up the speed up there, that um, limiting factor with cutting sometimes. Um, and on distributing trees um, at Suffolk Tree Warden Network, we have a lot of um, events at fairs and um, um, county shows and all kinds of events with our gazebo and we always um, collect lists. I've got a, I've got a list of 80 people from two shows. They've all got land want to plant trees. So by advertising what you're doing at any fight or something you have, it's surprising how many people come out of the woodwork, pun intended, who have land to plant trees. Fantastic. Thank you, Richard. The cutting's also a great idea um, that I think we could push more with our school network as well. Um, yeah, really helpful tip. Thank you. Andre, did you want to add something? Sorry, me? Yes, Sandra yeah. Tuck, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just a quick one. That, um, you know, like you said, when people go collecting, you don't always know what they're picking up. So we've, you know, it's quite useful to just ask them to put a leaf 
and a bit of a twig or a few things like that in the in the bag it's an easy way of then you can try and identify it when it comes back because um, we yeah we do get people collecting seed and I think it is actually really quite important that 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 the kids or the school or whatever they do know it's good to know where the trees are going to go when they've been growing them um, because otherwise you I mean, we, we, we managed fine this year, but we weren't particularly organised about that part of it. <laughs> so we had a lot of trees and, you know, like Richard said, I mean, we were lucky that we, we managed to get people coming for the trees. But there's nothing worse than having the trees and then no home for them. Um, mm. And actually, like, like um, Matt was saying, I mean, the, the, some of the bigger trees like the horse chestnut are going to be a lot harder find, to find homes for than just the hedging and things. So um, most of the trees, school grounds, they don't want the trees. They don't want to put the trees in the school grounds. The caretakers don't like them, um, you know, because they think it takes it takes up more time to look after them. So if you've, you've still got to win that battle, then you, uh, yeah, but you've got to, you've got to, and we, we are, we would take trees. I mean, just in our area, if people are growing trees, we have a donation, you know, people donate trees and then we find planting places for them we quarantine them first because we we don't want to like spread disease but um yeah that's really helpful in terms of the planning process um and a really useful tip in terms of id and um, putting in a leaf and a, a little bit of twig so that you can id the seeds that are being gathered thank you um and rich i think you've got your hand raised as well yeah um we we did um we had an experience of, as I said before, um, collect, uh, growing trees. So because we thought we'd get a load of conkers, we asked, <laughs> we asked the um, in the letter that went out to everybody at the school, we we asked them to select trees that we could manage on site, or we said that the tree would then go home they could plant it out at home. So we gave, we had different options, either to plant a selected a, a, a particular number within the school or the tree could go home. So things like apple trees, growing apple trees from pips. So then you're gonna get a, a much smaller tree. Um, the other thing that um, some schools may be able to do is the Maiwaki method, which uh, Matt's told us about, we've planted uh, in 2021, I was uh, involved in planting uh, several different intense, um, densely planted tiny forests and uh, schools and communities can easily tie up with that. Another thing um, that schools might want to do is, is to contact their local tree warden or tree guardian or tree planting group. So there's a lot of preparation work I think before you 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 know schools start out on a on a tree growing uh, tree nursery project because um, I know I know for a fact there's there's so many different tree planting groups uh, tree guardian groups that that always have places you know they've done that prep work they always have places to plant out trees um, what else have I got on my list. Yeah, I think I think it's that's oh yes, yes. The thing that we're doing at the moment in Nottingham is uh we're we're getting lots and lots of people to to grow oaks from seed because there's a major people's forest to enlarge Sherwood Forest. So it, again, it's tying in with the larger community and to find out what's going on in your local area. That's fantastic, thank you. Um again really emphasizing that importance in the planning um, and their messages that we do need to reiterate with our schools um, in the chat as well Paula mentioned teaming up with developers of local housing sites um, which is a great one because they often have targets to meet um, seedlings giving them to families um, and I know that's one of our school has done that every pupil takes a tree when they leave at the end of year six um, and another mention there of volunteer tree warden networks having good contacts for just distributing trees um, so thank you some really useful information shared there um, I'm just aware of timing and um, I don't know whether we've got time for one more or whether we need to move on now and see discuss any other at the Q&A Hilary do you want um, to move yeah on? we've got time for another comment I think one more so uh, one more 
um, point that's been raised by our schools is if they have started something. So Matt mentioned that he had an unofficial year of growing trees from seed that um, possibly didn't get off to the most positive start and was a bit of a learning curve. If some of our schools or schools across the UK have um, have made a start and have tried growing trees from seed and have got a setup in their school but are struggling for whatever reason are having um, less success than they expected, would it are there networks out there and I know we've had mentions of people like um, tree wardens but community tree nurseries as well would they be willing to pop in and visit schools that who were who were on this journey at the start of this journey to support them in identifying the issues or how might they go about discovering what the problem is that is um leading to their reduced success or that has meant that they've not got off onto the most positive start so what kind of support could they reach out to if they do think that they're struggling with that? Um, Peter, I think I saw your hand go up there. Oh yeah. Um, I'm just, um, I find um, planting trees with primary schools very easy. They're all very enthusiastic and, and so forth. And it's very easy, but when it comes to secondary schools, they all seem to be get, a little bit despondent and it becomes a lot more challenging. Um, is there any, I don't know if anyone's got any methods they could share with how to how to encourage the teens into a bit more planting? I suppose having 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 a having teachers like Matt is really positive. Um, but if if the teachers aren't as um, enthusiastic as people like Matt, then, then there can be some challenges there, can't there? Absolutely. I mean, from our point of view, we have some secondary schools who have forest leads. Now, most forest schools are within primary schools, from our experience, but we do have some secondary that do have forest leads um, and have forest schools operating. So they have got someone really positive who are at that driving force. Um, and I think Sandra touched upon this as well. Some of our um, secondaries do link the um, their outdoor education to the careers program um, and to work experience they have got um, I, my former career was secondary education so they do have um, targets that they have to meet standards that they have to meet in terms of careers and that is exposure to um, different working environments and different uh, range of careers so that can be a way to to engage schools as well who might not who might not always um, prioritise outdoor learning over their results and uh, their external targets. So that's something that they do need to evidence that they're meeting and so that's a way that some do. Um, and others from a PSHE um, and kind of mental health and wellbeing point of view, um, that can be something that they see a real value in. But it is definitely a harder sell. Um, and so I think you know, the numbers of secondary schools are, are considerably lower than the number of primaries. Um, and so the kind of number that will be really engaged is smaller. And we do find that ourselves. I move on to um to Will now to hear about the new project uh, with CTMs in schools and then take some more questions after you. Hello everyone, can everyone hear, hear me? Yes. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll just share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, can people see my screen? Okay, brilliant. Um, yeah, so uh, what today's um, webinar um, we're hoping would help us achieve is, is to yeah look, kind of broad um show some potential models that schools and community tree nurseries use to um both together and separately to grow trees from seed um and yeah to just get get different people's takes on what they how they do it because we know there's so many different um there's so many different ways of doing it out there um and it's, it'll be really, it'd just be really good to try and um, try and learn from each other and what what works because connecting school childrens or, or or community groups to um, to growing trees from seed is such a beneficial thing um, 
that would be amazing if we could we could uh, yeah we could we could do it uh, we could do it more which is what this project hopefully will help us do in so in in some capacity um so we are part of the life on the hedge project which is we've done an overview about this uh, past past webinar but it's runs till the um march in 2025 and it's a hedgerow project so not directly related to um to um to community tree nurseries but i'll tell you how it links in a second uh, and it's got various aims including uh, increased awareness of hedgerows more better connected hedgerows better managed hedgerows and uh, a rural and urban focus um, obviously a work working with community tree nurseries and schools we're totally looking at increased awareness of, of hedgerows and trees and um, and there's going to be a rural and urban focus uh, because of where schools are located um, we our previous hedgerow pro project closed the gap um, as part of that we worked with uh, more trees down in Devon to um, we did cops in a box which was sending um, sending a a series of route trainers out to um out to various community groups and schools to let them to let them uh, to get them set up to plant trees uh, there on site um and we thought we would we could go down that avenue or we could also try and do a uh, uh try different models and see what works and maybe not just going down the down the path of um path of just giving people a um the root trainers um but also almost a bit of a package of different things and bring things in and one of the amazing things that they did with with cops in the box was uh, more trees and uh, various partners developed the tree growers guide which is there behind me um which is yeah really really useful for people trying to learn how to grow trees from seed <clears throat> so who funds um who funds this round uh, of funding so it's part of the trees call to action fund which is um developed by defra and the forest commission it's getting delivered to us by the the national lottery heritage fund um so what is so what we're trying to do uh with this project we've got a, uh, an aim and some objectives here which is we would like to work with community tree nurseries and, and help them be able to uh feel enabled to work with schools and uh and, and or community groups you'll hear me say that a lot on this and or community groups um to grow trees from seed uh, and we hope that will connect community tree nurseries to local schools and community groups and uh, kind of foster that relationship and um, in doing so increase the community tree nursery capacity to grow locally sourced and grown trees from seed um, and so we can increase um, school and local tree planting efforts uh, with a kind of a real community focus um, and also a focus on biosecurity and plant health and how that factors into the whole process and also to engage children and community groups with this whole process it links in with so well with so many aspects of everyday life and so many aspects of the, cur of the curriculum that it's such a amazing vessel to be able to kind of um to um to kind of improve well-being to develop lifelong passions in these areas potentially even go on to help children go on um to decide what they want to do in later life if they if they decide that actually a trees or horticulture or a career in environmental um things is what they want to do um and what we'd like what we'd like from this and what we kind of hope that the a community tree nursery project with schools would be able to um um would, would different the different partners would uh, would be able to get from it is that we, these long lasting positive relationships between the schools and community groups and community tree nurseries um We'd love to see, yeah, community tree nurseries helping their local schools to be able to achieve, achieve these planting projects um, and to be able to um, not only plant them in schools, but also the local community and vice versa. We, we'd love to hear from people um, <clears throat> to um, to know if actually it could it works in the other way around as well. We'd love schools to be able to help community tree nurseries deliver their efforts even better as well. So if we can, um, that would be perfect. Um, uh, and throughout throughout this, we're hoping we're going to have some supporting webinars through the Community Tree Nursery Collaborative, all all around this um, growing trees from seed um, with a schools focus, uh, and really get some training training out there as well. Um, and yeah, and I think it would be it would be really nice for us to be able to develop these different models 
so that going forward we we will know what works and what work uh, or what doesn't work and what works better and be able to really come up with some good case studies of how the different models work and how we can um we can move forward with that in the future so it's a uh, a um a potential grant fund which is available through through ourselves tree council um and depending on how many um on the layout of it uh, there's probably about if there's one community tree nursery working with one school it's about 700 pounds it would be about 700 pounds um and we'd like to see that split between the school uh, and the community tree nursery in some form the, the figures you can see here are just examples of what it could be um and obviously if you are if you're a community tree nursery and you're engaging with more than one school say you're engaging with three schools in this split your 450 pounds is obviously going to be multiplied um and what this can be used for is equipment so things like glove gloves watering valves root trainers all the things that you might need for growing trees from seed it could go to like say so right towards raised beds to tap ins installation um and or it could be um and or it could be used for training workshops you know so um funding some um somebody to be able to go into a school and give a um a tree id or seed id um or processing um workshop um now i will talk about this in, in a little bit I mean, we're aware as well that 700 pounds is um or it's it's not a huge amount of money so we we'd love to be able to, we'd love to hear your feedback on what you think is possible with that money and also what you think um and what you think you could do with more would more help you um kind of realize your if you have a, a vision how much more do you think you would need obviously within a realistic um uh, realistic kind of scale um and there's several ways that uh, uh we can help really so the grant funding is is what is one aspect of it uh, and we can help with throughout with all the the grant application process and, and kind of help 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 you um, whether you're a community nursery or a school or a community group um discuss the kind of whole process um and we can help out uh to reach out and to maintain those community uh, those relationships between community tree, nurs tree nurseries and local schools um we've got as katie said we've got our uh, national schools program um uh, our young tree champions program uh so we're well versed in working with schools and you know um kind of fostering those those relationships to be really really beneficial and we, we would see this up this as an opportunity for us to be able to work cl more closely with um with schools and maybe even get them set on to a on a journey to be able to use this project as a pathway into becoming one of our beacon schools as well which then allows them to have additional funding um for tree planting for uh, for technology access to training that kind of thing um, and one of the things that we are in the process of uh, of doing at the moment um, and Katie can touch on this in in, in, in a little bit is that we're, uh, we're partnering with Hampshire County Council and we are um in the process of producing the young tree grows guide so the version of the tree grows guide but um aimed at a younger audience which will be completely um, which will be curriculum linked so there'll be about 40 curriculum linked learning resources within that focusing on dro uh, growing trees from seed and what you need to be able to do that um so being able to bring that together as a as a, as a, a package to someone uh, might be quite um quite um attractive for schools because they they have they potentially have a little bit of funding to get them started but then they have a network of of um of, of help and expertise coming from uh, the local community tree nurseries and obviously the collaborative um and also these extra learning resources which will hopefully also help with buy-in from people people above in in the school um because they can then say well it links in with all these different areas of our of our curriculum which is great um we've also got a a really good network of tree wardens and many of you might or might all, um, already be tree wardens so there are there are there is scope within this as well to be linking in with tree wardens um 
each tree warden network is um, is is different, and it it's, it all works in a slightly different way. So that it would have to be a discussion with that tree warden network um, to discuss kind of their capacity and things. But they are a potential source of additional support and and you know expertise and people who really love trees and care for trees and have a really good knowledge of trees as well. Um, and as mentioned before, um, we're hoping to also provide these uh, at least four. Um, school specific webinars to provide training and to share successes and challenges through um through the community tree nursery collaborative um and you know and that, that'll be to talk about successes talk about things that uh like katie said there's quite a few people who have started the journey but have kind of maybe fallen at the first hurdle and it might have dented um um their kind of their thought that they can actually do it so seeing people through and being able to give them that that confidence that they can actually do it um, is what we're, what we're hoping to achieve with um, with some kind of um, scheduled training throughout. Um, and yeah, and we've deliberately kept it quite broad. So there's not a lot of um, specific things that we are potentially saying you need to grow 500 trees over, over, over the two years or you need to do this and that. We've kept it quite broad because we, we, we would like to see that um, we'd love to kind of understand the different ways that people would like to work with schools and how and how they can see that relation work, work relationship working and, and then we can uh, um, and we can kind of base it on that but these these are some of the, the, the kind of examples of things that you know it'd be, it would be great for us to be able to see with if you can say okay we'll, we'll we'll aim for x number of trees or we'll we'll aim for x number of meters of hedging and um, to be grown from seed over the next two three years that'd be that'd be brilliant um if you can link in um, and say, well, this is actually going to be for this pl this planting scheme, which is going to be in the school or in this park or wherever or with the tree warden um, network. Great. Um, it'd be great to see teachers trained up or community members trained up so that they can themselves feel confident, inspired to be able to deliver some um, some of these sessions, you know, seed collection or processing or even uh, being able to do it themselves and being able to pass that on to um, schools and communities. Um, and really important, we'd love to see school school students just um, just engage from the whole the whole uh, the whole process. So right from uh, um, picking up that seed all the way to it being lifted, ready to be planted out in wherever it's planted. Um, and yes, and we 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 talked before about some of the problems that schools faced uh, faces uh, faced um, such as staffing things, uh, staffing problems, and also over 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 summer watering issues and things like that um, and if there's kind of novel ways or, or ways that that can be um overcome that'd be great to hear, hear about those as well um, and at the end of it end of it really it's we just we'd love to see lasting relationships between community nurseries and local communities and local schools and if we can help that um with that in any way that would be that'd be perfect um so like I said, the, our our funding runs until March twenty five. So we're gonna have we'll have two years of applications. So first year um, will um, will run until September, which is roughly seed, seed um, gathering season anyway. Um, and the same same again about July to the end of September in two thousand and twenty four as well. Um, and if you're interested, we I'd love to hear hear from you. So my email address is both on this slide and it's also in the chat. Um, and yeah, it'd be great to hear from you if you're a community tree nursery, a community group, a school, um, to register interest. And also, it'd be great if you could tell us how you think, um, even if you're not interested necessarily in the project, if you could talk about, if you could let us know what you think that uh, that potential money could be used for effectively. And also, um, yeah, tell us funding needs how that funding might need to change in order for you to be able to kind of fulfill your ambitions and achieve um, achieve different projects or, or a wider project or a more successful project it just it'd be great to get your uh, your, fee your feedback um, and hopefully yeah we'll, the end game is that yeah community nursery schools communities growing together um, and it's all very happy has anybody got any questions there's a whistle stop tour Um, Will, there were just a couple of questions in there about you mentioned the resources that will be coming out in um, autumn for to support um, 
schools and families and mm. other um it's fair, fair anyone in the community for engaging people in growing trees from seed um, so that Young Tree Growers Guide um, will be, the first part of it will be available to September. Um, so it will be in chapters, there will be seven chapters in total. The first four will be available in September. That will be freely available online. Um, and it will then, the final section of it will be available, should be by the end of um, October. So the entire thing will be available by the end of October. It will be an online resource um, that can be downloaded. Um, with individual worksheets that can be printed um, separately. So it can be dipped in and dipped out of um, just if certain areas um, are required, certain details required, then people can just cherry pick the information they need or they can go through the whole resource from start to finish um, to help them through the process. Um, as Will mentioned, it's working with um, Hampshire County Council who have approached us to help them create this. And so it's targeted at Key Stage 2, but there is the potential that that will um, develop in the future um, but yeah we will we will be sharing information with other school networks about that close to the time brilliant thank you Katie um, just just scrolling through um, see Paul um, Paul has said how about involving sixth form colleges like I said we, we've, we've deliberately kept this it quite open so if there's if there are situations where there's a local sixth form college that you think you could work with um, yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great to it'd be great to to, to hear from you. Um, like I say, it's it's not it's not it's not just a primary um, primary fund. It's primary and secondary. It's our, or it's or a community group. We are we'd like to aim it towards towards um, schools simply because we've got such a already got such a range of different things that we could also offer to kind of almost create this whole package and thing that could that could work really well. Um, but yes, yeah, six form college absolutely. Um, I'm just going to scroll down, see if there's any more. Uh, Richard, do you, do you promote peat free comp compost? Yeah, we, we 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 do. We promote peat free compost, and, um, and we also um, promote um, don't use um, herbicides, pesticides, um, as well. Um, Paula, I, I think schools will need a watering budget for metered water, not staffing. That's an interesting one. Um, should be good to explore. Um, is the, uh, uh, Rachel, is the grant paid in advance or after? It, it would be a um, a basic grant agreement which would be paid it after. So th throughout the process, we'd we'd uh, agree agree um, items that could be that would be uh, that would be claimed for, and then once you um, once you paid for those, send in the uh, evidence and we'd be able to be able to pay those. Nice, uh, Chris Perry got a hand up. Oh, hello. Hello, Will. Um, I think your grant's a really great idea. Um, but I was involved, I've been involved with schools locally quite a bit over like 12 years ago, teaching at a, a secondary school. Um, they have an environment club and they do a lot of planting there. It's a great project. Um, and then just before COVID, I got involved with someone at a primary school locally mm -hmm. who is who's in a big project that uh, finds woods for trees. So if people, you know, have got trees, they'll find woods for them. So it's actually up in Scotland, near Scotland. Um, but we were talking about doing stuff in his, starting doing a project in his school and talking about doing other schools in our town. And... Um, my, my main stumbling block, apart from all the obvious ones about timings and people available and um, was I would I wanted to get paid for it because I run a voluntary tree nursery mm -hmm. and I just needed a bit of income. So, so, you know, I'm just I'm still looking for ideas as to how I could get funding for that. Because most grants don't pay people. Well, they do big, big. Uh, I know, you know, big tree nurseries have got grants, and that pays for people. But um, I mean, we'd look, oh, we'd be looking for something specific, okay. you know, just as an income. Yeah, um, I think, and Annie, if Annie, if you'd like to come on this as well and confirm that it's, it's right with within this, um, if it's say funding a session, or a say, okay, there's going to be this session which is to train 
X people in this uh, in seed collection. And that takes into account your time. That would be feasible. I think uh, I've, uh, I'm not sure about um, match these saying this is just going to cover x x many hours of of your time. I think if if it was if it could be applied to a uh, activity and invoiced in that way, um, I think that would be okay. Yes. Yeah. Agree. We will. So we're funded by um, lottery money. So they we kind of. Uh, are at their tune, so to speak, but we can take this feedback. We will put it back to them um, and say, right, if there is that kind of overwhelming feeling, is this possible? Um, so that's really helpful for us. But at the minute, we're kind of probably, we think it's more likely um, that it's just going to be for kind of capital items, or if we can have like a little, as Will says, like a little training package. So if it was, you're coming in almost like a consultant, so to speak, rather than um, like salary time. So there would be like an invoice that we then kind of show as evidence, if that makes sense. But yeah, yeah, it does, thanks. Really helpful feedback, definitely, for us to mm, give to the, the lottery. Thanks. Okay, is there any, any more questions? So Andy Egan's got his um, hand raised. Hi, Andy. So I'm at the wrong end. I wrong end of the cameras. I couldn't see all the hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thanks, everyone, and thanks for all the fantastic presentations, especially Sandra and Matt. I think um, Chris's points are a really important one. Um, and yeah, we where many grant schemes don't actually cover um, the staff time um, for people that actually get involved and actually valuing the expertise that community tree nursery folk bring to this. So I think that's something that, you know, collectively we all we all need to look at and the uh, um, community tree nursery folk who are providing advice and guidance to schools are providing expertise. So maybe is the way to look at it is as a kind of type of consultancy. And the question I was going to bring in, perhaps um, Sandra will be able to answer this one, is um, about having agreements with the schools, having some kind of written agreement because you know the challenges around staff always moving something can happen one year and all of a sudden the the, the key no, not every school has a map do they let's see you know so um how to ensure there's some kind of sustainability in terms of well you know do you have an agreement for like you know two three years that actually makes it worthwhile you know for the community tree nursery to in invest the time and also the school as well um, that it isn't just sort of dependent on one teacher or the forest school leader. Um, you know, how do we really kind of build in sustainability and is having, you know, is there are examples of schools having kind of agreements with CTNs and the kind of resources that that they will provide to enable the community tree nurseries to provide that service um, as well? I think that was a key one I wanted to, to ask. I mean, I'm also interested in I mean, I did want to say as well that community tree nurseries are also community groups um, and many most community tree nurseries are also working with other community groups. So I guess there's a question there about, well, if community tree nurseries are already doing this, they may may host volunteer groups who come from a particular project, whether it's um, I visited CTN last week who had groups of young offenders who came to work there or people with some learning disabilities. So they're already providing that kind of service so I guess the question for this project is how how do you kind of assure some kind of additionality and um, in terms of what CTNs might already be doing I'm also interested in how people sol solve the issue of summer watering because um, <laughs> that's going to become an, an ever increasing challenge with increasing drought conditions I know people have said pay for the water but presumably unless you've got a really snazzy irrigation set up you still need someone to actually come and do the watering so that's another one and the other point I was thinking of in terms of the challenge of um, you know senior schools and uh, curriculum and I mean I think it's a challenge for all kinds of sort of environmental activity with schools it's kind of a, a known problem because the teachers are preoccupied with delivering GSEs and all of that, that's understandable. So I'm wondering if there are opportunities. I mean, obviously people will know about the um, 
uh, natural history GCSE, but that's not until 2025, I think. But I think subjects like business studies could be really good because, you know, a community tree nursery is an enterprise and there are so many different forms of tree community tree nursery lots of decisions about oh what kind of for you know are we going to be unconstituted are we going to be a cic or are we going to be a business company all, all that kind of stuff it would be there's there's a lot involved i mean the whole kind of supply chain from seed to production i think you know maybe we don't naturally think of subjects like that but i think that could be kind of a, you know setting up a tree nursery could be a great little sub you know project for business studies students who are doing that at GCSE okay that's enough for me for now but anyway I don't know Sandra about the agreement thing with schools what do you think about that do you do that do you know? um, yeah so what you're quite mm -hmm. right actually um, with um, the school tree nurseries will have a, a basic MOU a memorandum of understanding and you know what we'll do for you and what we expect you to do in return and it's really i think on there i think most of them are four years asking for a four-year commitment which mm -hmm. is you know seem seems like a good compromise if you like um if it depends on how much you're spending in the school mm. as well probably um but yeah I, I completely agree and the other thing was to the mou once you ask for that it kind of triggers um, you know, a high conversations higher up in the organisation, basically. So usually the teacher won't sign that, it'll have to go to the head. And then so again, it's just about sort of embedding the nursery in the school as part of the school, what the school does, so that then it's down to the senior management team really to make decisions about fun, helping to fund it and and signing this MOU. And that means if somebody then leaves, there's more, you, you, you're, you're building in that kind of sustainability but yeah it's a bit of a worry with schools like I said one of the schools we set up a nursery and I haven't been able to get in for months and months and months even just to look at the trees so yeah yeah and I, I agree with the comment from Rachel I mean if if what we what we want to do is once once the nursery has been set up to be honest it's, it doesn't really cost anything I mean you might be talking a bit a little bit of compost but if you're bringing in, I mean, it depends what you're doing, but if you're bringing seedlings to them or they're growing old seedlings, it's very, very cheap to run a tree nursery. But again, as, as people are saying, the main thing is staff time mm. and resources coming from the outside, whether they be volunteers or a community tree nursery or whoever it is, um, it's, it's getting those people to commit to a regular, regular um, sessions with the kids and stuff like that so that's and then and the school making the arrangements to enable that to happen which is sometimes seems to be quite difficult so thank you i'm just aware of the time we have two minutes left matt did you have did you want to come in quickly before we finish and make a comment uh, yeah so just yeah. going back to the earlier point about watering so <clears throat> at the moment we've uh on time irrigation for most of our um, plants and trees in our school but we are just about to um, start a project with the energy team and working in Borough Council um, and we are going to be repurposing um, solar PVs that have been taken off of properties that are no longer that efficient but they're efficient enough for what I need um, which I'm then going to get them for free and hopefully going to power an IBC and a pump and create an irrigation system so I'll be able to come back to you and tell you if it works. <laughs> but the idea is it should be a very cheap, um, sustainable way of producing an irrigation system, hopefully. Touch wood. Well, that sounds very promising. Thank you so much. Um, so that brings us to the end of tonight's session. Thank you, everybody, for coming along this evening. Um, thank you to our guest speakers, Sandra and Matt, and Tree Council staff, Katie, Will and Annie. Um, I'll be sending a link to a recording later this week um so you'll be able to watch it again um do get in touch with the tree council staff the emails are in the chat the chat will be saved as well as a file so if you haven't managed to take note of them um i will also send that to, along in the email but thank you very much everyone have a good evening thanks Hillary. thanks everyone thanks all bye bye, bye. <laughs>